I'm usually against electronic assists because back in my day, people used to... This means that I am probably the worst person in the world to explain you how they work, but here we go. Hello adventurers, my name is Diogo Guerra and this is Off-Road, of course. As you guys know, modern motorcycles come riddled with modern electronics. Nowadays we have ABS, cornering ABS, off-road ABS, we have multi-level traction control, we have quick shifters, we have sport mode, rain mode, off-road mode, sometimes enduro mode, and the weird thing is, most owners, most people don't even know how or when or even if these things actually work. What's actually the off-road ABS? Eh, it's something, it, you know, it breaks better off-road. Traction control, it's, it's for you not to... Uh, it's, uh... And what's the difference between off-road mode and enduro mode? Uh, you know, the enduro mode is when... It's like holding a gun without knowing if the safety is on, if the thing is loaded, if the thing is cocked or even which side is the dangerous one. Well, today we are going to talk about the traction control on this 2019 KTM 390 Adventure. What I hope to demonstrate today is that, first, not all traction controls are the same, and second, they don't work the way most people assume and expect they do. A lot of people assume and expect traction controls to work on off-road motorcycles in the exact same way they work on 4x4 vehicles where, through some kind of magic, they let the vehicle crawl up impossible hills in total safety and control. Well, no. 4x4 vehicles have four powered wheels, mounted on four independent suspensions, so it makes sense to let the computer determine how much power each of the wheels can actually use at any given moment, as the vehicle slowly negotiates its way up the top. This will never work on motorcycles, for two simple reasons. First, there is only one powered wheel, so it doesn't matter how smart your traction system is, it only has one wheel to work with. It does not have a way to redirect that power anywhere else. Second, unlike cars, motorcycles are things of balance, and the best way to keep them upright is to keep them moving, otherwise you need to use your legs, which is no bueno on a 200 kilo vehicle. The tougher the situation, the more speed and momentum you need to overcome it. And that's exactly what you risk losing if the traction control decides to intervene and to cut down power in its struggle for traction. But before I get crucified, let me make this very clear. I am aware that not all electronic assists and not all traction controls are the same. Old ones sucked, Modern ones are better, and they get better every year. Also, different manufacturers have different approaches, and there are huge differences between models inside each brand. For instance, the traction controls they fit on these new modern dirt bikes, they are awesome, because, to be honest, I don't even know when it's on or when it's off. And you know, you cannot feel it because the bike never loses power, it still skids, it still power slides, it feels like a normal motorcycle. But I think like in the limit, when it's skidding way too much, it will cut off the power a little bit, you don't really notice it. And that's, I mean, that, that's the, the highest honor I can bestow on a traction control, is to say that you cannot feel it. Uh, because I mean, th that's what I assume they would all be like. But that's not my experience with uh, adventure bikes. I have only tested a handful of modern adventure motorcycles, so I am sure there will be exceptions to what I am about to say. Either way, so far my experience with traction controls off-road, even the adjustable ones, have been either meh or plainly terrible. And the one here on the KTM 390 Adventure, it's one of those terrible ones. Oh, this is so scary. This is so scary with the traction control. I was full throttle and she was dying, dying as she came up. Jesus. 
again I will try momentum so momentum uh, she's already lo losing power losing a lot of power come on come on uh, uh, I have to use a lot of clutch to come up terrible experience now let's see with the traction control off first gear second gear because I can and then it just go up you know then it just go up and you can keep going <laughs> and the bike actually makes sense okay now I found some sand which is the the nemesis of most, most adventurers and it, I think it will be the nemesis of the traction control as well right now the traction control is off and I will try to go up this sandy dune. It rained like two hours ago, so the rain, the, the sand is actually really compact, very easy. Look at this, no big deal. No problem, even a little jump, like no problems whatsoever. So I accelerate, the bike picks up speed, second gear now, and it just, you know, I never use the clutch because I can just accelerate and the revs go up. No biggie. Okay, now I will turn on the traction control and I think things will become a bit harder for me. Okay, she's losing power. I'm using the clutch I'm, and she stalled. Because on sand, the rear wheel needs to spin. Let's go, let's go. Pick up speed, come on, come on, full throttle, this is full throttle, the bike doesn't go, doesn't pick, the, the, the revs don't go up, she doesn't pick up speed, like, how can I manage sand, you know, mm, I cannot even get out of here, like, go, stalls, Jesus. Traction control on, first gear, I'm full, completely full throttle, ah, oh, she's dying, come on, speed, ah! she managed yes yes well she did like I was full and the worst part is even if you turn the traction control off it will turn on again every time you restart the bike or even if you let it stall by mistake which tells me that KTM really didn't plan this bike to do a lot of off-road or they had no idea what they were doing with its electronics but to be fair, they learned the lesson, the new 2022 390 Adventure has a traction control that it, at least it's smart enough to stay off when we tell it to turn off. I don't know if it works any better though. By the way, if you are enjoying this video criticizing electronic assists, please don't forget to like, to subscribe, to hit the thingy and to share. Share this video on a BMW group if you want to see a comment section on fire. Thank you. So what is the conclusion of this video? I think that electronic assists come in too many shapes and sizes considering what people understand about them. And just because they are considered to be a safety measure, that does not make them flawless or even that necessary. I would even argue that they can become quite dangerous when they decide to turn on by themselves. And this video was about traction control, but same goes for the ABS. I'm not saying you should become me, an old-fashioned caveman that is distrustful of everything that's new and could corrupt the old ways, but I think you should be a little bit more critic when judging all the electronic crap they use nowadays to upsell their new bikes. And guys, please keep in mind that I am only judging these electronic aids off-road. On the road, I'm sure they work much better. They were designed for that. They were way more tested on the road. And I am sure at least most of them will definitely help you save your life when something goes wrong. And now I'm done. See you next week and happy rides.